What? I agree with what Karen was stating, that I think that it, it this sheet will give us a chance to determine do we focus on emergency aid only or preventive counseling. I think it's a nice step sheet. Uh, because then if you say yes or no, or a percentage of the funding that we have available, takes then it takes care of the bottom part. You know, because if we decide, hey, you know what, based on the constituency needs and what people have given us feedback, they wanna make sure that the money goes directly back to the community in this way. So one of them is, you know, the one that we fund. There's certain organizations that automatically do not meet the criteria of the funding need. Or we know exactly how much money is going to be allocated to those organizations. Um, and then when it comes to the categories, I think that we're gonna have to make the very difficult decisions or in or out. And in the end, I mean, once we make those very difficult decisions of in or out, it's not even gonna be up to us. We have to present this to the whole body of the council. Right. And the body of the council is gonna have to determine based on their constituency and what they have heard as priorities, something that the council would vote on. Because what I, I really was a bit disheartened by was the fact that we had our staff spinning their wheels going through this whole process and then we were informed that then after the staff did all the work and presented to us what was gonna be funded, in the end then council went ahead and said no, um, it's not gonna happen. I think that this would be very prevented if the council then in turn gets a chance to vote on the criteria process and the voting process and they agree on the priorities. It makes the job a lot easier and then it removes from the council having to make that decision because the decision has been made by the application, which is what we're trying to accomplish here. And if we're able to establish just by this line items, I think it's, it's, it's gonna be very helpful as a process. Any comments from the group on that? Well, I'm hearing us um, not changing the form. I'm not hearing comments about changing working backwards up our list, that the priority list sounds satisfactory. I'm hearing that the calendar appeared satisfactory at first blush as long as we take out the helping people with the applications. Um, you weren't able to be here for the discussion on the scoring criteria itself. Um, maybe we can revisit that. They are the same questions. They are just organized differently. See, the only one that I really have concern with is the second one that says the city of Topeka is an appropriate and needed source. Any organization that's applying is is applying because we're a needed source of revenue. And this is that is true. We had this discussion a little bit, but the issue is whether the review committee feels that they need funding from us. And if you don't want to put that in there, that's fine. But otherwise, it makes it it we don't really have any other way in their performance scoring to say you know what we think you're doing a fabulous job but we don't think you need our money I so it's whether you want to do that I think if I read if I'm reading it correct okay and I, I think the other point that we were getting to on that point is that if there are multiple other funding sources for that activity then do we really need to be funding that activity for that agency um, wouldn't that fall under services are unduplicated not yeah. necessarily right yeah. daycare centers for instance you don't want one mega daycare center in town you want to have however many we have 50 <laughs> and they're duplicated but each one has got to stand on its own legs versus um, another service you know one of the things we're struggling with right now is you know the emergency aid funds and having we they probably 10 15 years ago uh, what we found was that there were more agencies than there are today, but everybody was out of money all the time. And so part of the process was, you know what? We think that somebody ought to go out of business here. And so there's more money. It, we're not using our resources well if we're spending a whole lot of money on staff who pick up the phone just to say they don't have any money. And so maybe there should be less pots of money so that the resources are a little bit better expended now that's gonna end up being, a, if we're still funding emergency aid, that would still be an issue, I suppose. But um, if it was, 
we just want to that there's got to be some way for that group to say we want to get out of this we, we just don't think maybe there's a new funding source for that kind of program that has come to town that was a bad example I think um, before there's a new funding source and so it's a chance for the city to get out of funding that the minimum grant level might not solve that problem but if the council wants to say you know we think anybody that's in this area or this particular agency could get funding from X or Y then it, it lets this committee say that Madam Chair if I may I think, yes. I think the other point we had in that so that first one really kind of deals with are there other funding sources out there for X, Y, and Z? The unduplicated really gets kind of down to the service provider level. Are there other service providers in the area providing that activity? So there is some separation between those two okay. was the intent. Better answer than mine. We also did have some comment, however, and I, I don't know if it was before you got here, saying, well, but even if, even if something has changed, we'll still take your money and put it to good use you know do how does how do we set up a structure so a committee can can focus on that Just maybe the priority list takes care of it mm -hmm. and that's what I'm thinking okay If you want to take that one out, how would you reallocate the 10 points? I would assign um, five additional points to pass grant administration is effective. And I would apply five more points for unduplicated services. Reaction to that? Are you, are you doing this on B? No, she's doing it. B, version B, correct. You're doing it on version B? Version okay. B. So plus five to pass grant administration is effective and unduplicated services. Mm hmm And subtract the 10. I, I actually, I, I like that idea, as long as, and this was another point of discussion um, that I don't think you were here for, uh, Councilwoman De, De La Isla, and that was uh, on the 20 point category of the applicant has achieved outcomes and goals on prior grants. Mm -hmm. um, I, I wanted to make clear, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on this that uh, that prior grants are, are not necessarily city grants so that if an applicant uh, obviously we would use our experience with prior applications if they if they had used city grants but that if a, a new entity came in and could demonstrate an ability uh, to achieve outcomes uh, even if the funding source was not ours that they would be able to garner some points from from that since it's the single lar largest individual category. But I'm fine with the uh, with moving those 10 points from the city of Topeka as appropriate and needed source to the unduplicated and past grants. The challenge that I have with that is, is how are we able, then we would have to redo the application in, in such that we're able to go ahead and look for those outcome measurements. So we would be asking not only for our own outcome measurements that we requested of the grantee, but we're also going to be asking them, what else did you do with other people? And I think that that's very unfair um, because it'd be putting the city and verifying how you manage another grant that has absolutely nothing to do with us. I, I think that's not exactly how, my, my goal with that is not to say if we've dealt, if they've dealt with the city before, then 
that criteria or you know their their ability to achieve outcomes whether you know they achieved 85 percent of outcomes um, you know if they achieved 85 percent of outcomes that would be 17 per you know 17 points on a 20 point scale um, right yeah and you know but if you have a new entity coming in that has done fantastic work with state grants or federal <coughs> grants or something like that if you look at that question as written without prior grants their maximum score is eight it is the single largest point total so their maximum score is 80 which I imagine 80 is going to be competitive you know if if 80 points is competitive to win a grant that even if they scored perfect on everything they would they would not be able they would to still win be a taxed grant 20 points right because that becomes that becomes if you if you make that grant source funding um, city only, you turn that in from a subjective category to a completely objective category where, you know, you can have if you've never been to you know uh, with the city that you you get zero points. And and the committee was wanting to open up absolutely on an, absolutely. On an objective scale. So then. That, that would be on the burden of the staff to create the question that would be able to capture that and have the reference source. Right, and we okay. also talked about the fact that they had a worksheet that, that kind of subbed out in each scoring range before how to, did, did some defining of that and mm -hmm. that, that they would do that once we've approved the basic system, they would, they would do the worksheet and they would also redo the application forms appropriately um, the other, uh, when you mentioned outcomes, though, if you the outcomes should be the same and the outcomes measures should be the same, regardless of funding source for a certain program. And done right, an outcome isn't how many outputs you have. Mm -hmm. It isn't that you help twenty kids over here mm -hmm. and a hundred kids over here. It's did eighty five percent of those kids demonstrate or report improved whatever mm -hmm. and so if it's done right mm -hmm. you've got apples and apples mm -hmm. so I agree. I agree. We, we know we did talk about that a little bit earlier and that there would be a challenge to to Brad's staff or Brad and his staff to get it written right do you want to consider these further this is this is the first time this is out or do you want to um, pass it out of committee today well if I may madam chair please the only thing that I'm, I was just thinking it over, rather than mm -hmm. past grant administration was effective because that would be a little redundant with applicant that 20 points, I think that it would be even more powerful to see that the agency has a mechanism for client output. This is their, if, if Maybe I'm not reading this I right. I think this is the turning in your grant reports and it's more of an administrative category. Correct. Client Madam output? Chair, no. The, Grant administration. The past grant administration that really deals with are they getting their reports done on time and submitted? Are they submitting pay requests? Yada yada yada. Versus are they meeting their outcomes, which would be that other section. And and that's why I'm saying that maybe the five points that I added to here, adding it to client input, because we oh. are serving as a city our constituents. Mm. Uh -huh. And I think that it would be so much more important to give more credit to those that are able to measure what the constituency is saying about the services that they're receiving. So moving the five points that I initially suggested. <laughs> That's okay. Doing That's what this is for. <laughs> because I think that it, it gives more power to the constituent to know that we are going to be looking for feedback. Um, that we do want to know that, that there is communication and that these services are being effective and that it's being measured. Councilman? Reaction? I, I like it. I was prepared to make a motion if, if that's okay. Yep. I would uh, I would move that we direct staff to proceed um, with the social services funding uh, worksheet as is, with the social services grant calendar having one alter being the removal of uh, the second chance deadline for insufficient applications and 
move forward with uh, version B of the grant storing or grant scoring with the changes of removing the city of Topeka as an appropriate and needed source of funding for this program and allocating those 10 points equally, five each, to unduplicated services or any duplication with other services explained and adequately defended and agency has mechanism for client input. I am not going to try and repeat that. Is there a second? Second. <laughs> Any discussion from anyone? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carried unanimously. Whoa. Okay. That's how we do it. That's how we roll. Well, we, I uh, appreciate the process on the part of all the agencies as well as the committee to get us to this point. We are getting close to 4.30 today, I think. Let me check. I'm trying not to look at my... 4.23. Okay. Um, let us talk about our next steps. This, our charge was to get this system in place to recommend to the council. If we were going to go on this particular timeline that we've just adopted, uh, the sitting Economic and Community Development Committee would need to take that worksheet and make recommendations to the council. If you would like to simply, we have the capacity to move right on to that if we choose, um, but I, we, people weren't necessarily prepared to do it today. We have our next meeting scheduled for February the, whatever the second Monday in February is. Got it over here, I guess. February 10th. Um, that, that, uh, that spot is already being held. If you would like to substitute funding and sources from that agenda for this topic, or if you would like to do this sooner, um, let's talk about that. I, I would, uh, based on the calendar that we just approved and the fact that this committee is the committee that came up with the categories idea already um, and we're the reason that this group of categories is on there, mm -hmm. um, I think it would be in our best interest to go ahead and see if we can't come to a consensus on this form right now so that we can move quickly to stay on um, the calendar that we just approved and get this before the uh, city council within a month. Right now meaning just continue on and see if see how far we can get with that today? Correct. I wasn't sure everybody had brought back with them if you want to make reference to some of those funding source issues and so on that we had all of those documents here. I'm fine with taking a run at it and seeing where you go. Yes? I agree. All right. Let's surprise. We'll move on and have that discussion. Um, I will open it up now to the members of the committee to make some suggestions on what these priorities should be for 2014. I'll go ahead and start. I am, uh, I am fine since we're the ones that added all of these categories with confirming the categories as listed um, on, this, on this sheet. Uh, as far as the type of services, I would like to see 30% of grant funding go to emergency aid services and 70% of grant funding go to um, preventive and counseling or long-term services. Do you know what that number is today? Do you know what you're suggesting in terms of a change? Um, I don't have the exact number here. Actually, 
I didn't bring the big notebooks. I don't know. We, we actually worked on some numbers out of those. Well, I take that back because the numbers that we had before were by a general classification of an emergency aid agency, not an emergency aid program. So I'm not even sure that I, we would need staff to go back and, and review program by program within to see with the definitions that we just adopted. So we can still move along on that, but we mm -hmm. aren't sure what our current number is correct because we've not ever we've not gone back and classified until this was and that's, passed that's, that's that's one of the concerns that I had that we have them by category when you look at this you have medical youth services but none of those are lumped up as whether they are emergency services and we don't have a definition to what emergency versus preventative is I think that of course we know preventative is something before it happens YDBCA programs daycares mm -hmm. things like that but then what where does it fall I I would start being the bad guy and um, and say that one of the two concerns that I have is that although there are a lot of services that support um, that, that we have the county working with aging services when you look at our constituency as a whole most of our need is and most of our constituency is aging services um, we are working with a lot of people that have a lot of needs that are at their home that are not able to receive services from the community that depend heavily on aging organizations. Um, that there's duplication, yes, but that's not what we're addressing right now. We're addressing what the higher needs in our community are. And one of the biggest needs that we have with regards to that, which affects our public safety, is medical. Um, I am extremely concerned with the high number, number of, of people that are we have a lot of mental health situations that are happening that our police officers are having to deal with. Um, it is remarkable to look at the figures of people that we're investing $40,000 a year as a community um, on tax dollars to have somebody in a prison that maybe did not need to be in a prison because they did not receive medical services that they needed. Um, so those, um, and of course we have the H&D program, but the H&D focuses on housing and community development, so that's almost like a shoo-in because it's a priority for the city, so much so that we have a department that works with that. Um, thoughts? So what, what was that saying about what you would recommend in terms of categories being in or out? I'm saying that I'm up for discussion with regards to medical and housing being in um, and food and clothing, you know, that, that line item and um, mental health also being in and aging. So you are advocating that aging, that these be in and mm -hmm. then any that you did not mention, which is youth services? Correct. Or language services? Correct. Because basically all the ones below are funded for other sources, so we're really talking about these. The contracted services are their own line item, so the, we're not even considering those. Well, we, we need to at some point, but we don't need to right now. Mm -hmm. So then it leaves us with aging, medical, youth service, food, clothing, language service, mental health, and neighborhoods. And you are suggesting we fund aging, medical, food, clothing, housing, utility, and mental health. Correct. Only of those as a starting point for discussion. Category. Sure. Well, I, you know, I've advocated before um, for youth services, and I would, I would vote against a priorities recommendation that didn't have youth, or youth services in um, as a category. I think uh, particularly, and while we're not discussing duplication, we do have a, what is it, one cent or a half cent sales tax in the county um, that's specifically meant for uh, aging services. We, we don't have that for youth services, and I think, I think it's an important 
um, category two, you know, to at least, if we shut this down at this point, then any grant seeker, you know, they don't even get in the door. Um, maybe, maybe there are no, and you know, I doubt this, but maybe there are no use services that end up making the cut uh, with this new grading criteria, but I think they should have a, an opportunity to, to submit an application and to, um, you know, put their hat in the ring. So I would, I would very much so encourage keeping youth services in this categories list. And, and the reason that I brought that up is because I know that through the alcohol and drug funds, we do serve youth services. Very little. There's been a lot of argument about that. Um, and again, if you look at the back page of the handout that you've got with the priority sheet, mm -hmm. we do have some extra copies of that. I think you all, Janice, no. you know, okay. Well, what Jenny did was a breakdown of just city general fund, city CDBG, county general fund, and United Way for 13. We have another document that you got last time that takes each program that we funded and breaks out how many other funding sources it has and what percentage of the program we are funding and what percentage of the agency we are funding. That was a handout last time, so that both of those could be good reference. We did have staff check those. Um, sometimes people didn't fill it out very well. So it's a little funky. But anyway, special alcohol and drug, you can see um, there's the youth project is in there. Some folks have argued whether or not it's eligible uh, in the past. Um, and then the uh, evaluations at, at regional PARS, but there's been an argument on, and somebody else can help, help me out if I'm misspeaking, but that, that, that the treatment programs were supposed to be funded and that the youth programs that are intended to be preventive in terms of crime or drug use were not eligible there and should be funded through Youth services okay. categories, and that's so. that's where I was coming from yeah. because I felt that there were funding for those youth programs. Not that I want to eliminate them, but that's why we have. It's to have just the that, for sure, if they were being funded by another entity within the city, we were doing mm -hmm. the alcohol tax. Then it would make sense to release those funds and focus all of those alcohol funds into that pool, so that then we could just release some funds to give out to other organizations. Um, we can examine that more closely, both in terms of the youth services and the alcohol. Um, use, but that's that's the Cliff's notes on what it is right now. Is is there anyone that can elaborate on Nathan? You mentioned the half cent sales tax in the in the county. I did some research on that aging mill levy. I think is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Correct. Maybe somebody else wants to. The issue is that some years ago there was this kind of discussion that included the city and the county. Jocelyn's nodding, so help me out here. And, and there was a decision, I, I have it in my big notebook that I didn't bring today, because I, I researched it. I may not state it quite right anyway. The idea was that the county would fund everything, and they, they actually had the voters vote on the, quote, aging mill levy. But what, it, what the vote was, was that the, it was a cap. It was that the county would fund up to X amount of dollars, and there was no minimum. And so what's happened is that from that year, it has steadily gone down. There's not a dedicated mill levy, and there's not a dedicated absolute minimum amount of money, which is what I thought too, and that's why I checked. So it, it has, the county is well under that cap that the voters voted on, so therefore is in compliance with that quote aging mill levy but there is not a minimum or a dedicated percentage of anything that's pumping in. GR? It okay. will, it's averaged between 400 dollars and $600,000 a year. It's based on the mill levy, obviously. It's not to exceed a mill levy, but it's never been at a mill levy. Yeah, because their mill is how much? A million? It could be a million point five, depending on appraisals to the county. Yeah, but it can't exceed one mill. And it was a 1980 vote on 
Hopefully we pick that up on some sort of tape or camera. Thank you for answering from your seats. Um, so 400 to 600,000 a year compared to us funding 40, something like that, 43. And, and it's been, that, that balance has been that way for some time. And there were active discussions, what, over almost every year for five years before that the city would give it up and the county said they'd take it over, but then the city kept coming back in and saying, well, I'll, there we, and this is part of why we're in this process now, because people have constituencies, people care, and so the nonprofit boards and, and, and participants would come at budget time and the, the city would continue to, to fund. And I'm not saying what the choice is, but that's how it continued pretty much, right? One of the deals is that, and, and on the, on this, um, it, you might make a note actually on your priority sheet, on the county side there is, and, and you've got this in some other documents, there is a Shawnee County Advocacy Council on Aging, similar to the advisory groups on these other funding buckets at the bottom of the list, that is is representative of the aging services, is familiar with the, is tasked with really monitoring that sector. And they then, um, on the county side, review those grants and recommend to the county based on being a dedicated board to do that. We don't get any of that, we don't ask, we don't have a board like that on the city side to advise and one of the things we, we did notice was that even though we, some people got word in different ways that the issue of changing transportation was a mandate from the Jayhawk Area Agency on Aging, no one mentioned it in their application. So the city might not pick that kind of thing up if somebody who wasn't more familiar with the whole aging <coughs> milieu wasn't on the council. That was just, just a consideration. Whereas the Advocacy Council was very much knowledgeable about that. Because each of these, like alcohol and drug, homeless, juvenile justice, and housing, CDBG, all have advisory boards that advise on that money. Do we have from staff any information as to what the priorities for the city are so that we could kind of tie the city priorities to the funding priorities, anything that the city is working on specifically? Um, I, I'm not sure I fully understand the question. Are you talking about for the overall comprehensive plan of the city? Or Correct. Specifically no, 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 not for this. Just center. comprehensive plan of the city and H and D together. I mean, just so that we could know where were those goals at to see how we could maybe align these categories to those goals. You're talking about comprehensive, strate adopted strategic goals. Correct. Not yet, right? Okay. Yeah, that, that's, that's what we'll get. <laughs> the short that. answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, because then what what that would do for us is that it would really simplify this conversation. Because if we wait till the end of the month, it falls back on the 10th. We already have the information that we need. And then we could tie these funding sources to the strategic goals that the city has. And we could see how these organizations meet that criteria so that we're all aligned. I'm not seeing it as, I hear what you're saying. I'm not seeing it as direct of a connection there okay. because the, 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 the goals that will be recommended and ultimately discussed and adopted by council might be much broader in scope, more dealing with, it might be a little bit more difficult to, to tie that lot, to, to connect those points. I, I would hate to wait and then find out that you didn't, that it was too, it was too general. But okay. I, li I, mean, I like the thought, I, I think the, oh, I'll stop. <laughs> I, I, would, I would just say that uh, I think the you know the city priorities 
are taken care of in the in the scoring criteria more so than in I mean that's a specific category uh, within that score sheet so I I would be perfectly comfortable forwarding um, onto the council as a whole the priorities the categories that we you know that we came up with uh, in our first meeting that are listed here minus the description of you know categories that are taken care of by others um, actually to respond to your point which is a very good one one of the challenges is that probably quality of life is the kind of thing that would come out in yeah. a major in a major priority setting the challenge and, and we've heard from the city manager and others the challenge within that is nonetheless what do we do about quality of life as a city do we do arts do we do um, health healthy community kinds of things do we fund social services some communities don't do it at all mm -hmm. so we're going to set these categories and set priorities within that and then make a recommendation as to how much money it's all taking care of people and and what's that role of toward quality of life and, and taking care of our people um that said if you all want to have something specific like being the safest city in the united states is one of our safest capital city so if you chose to tie into something like that with the youth services or, or others could be done that makes the grant be complicated because it right. has to be. I'm just saying, if you want to go pick we want to make it easy. Um, initiatives that we have. My my question would be then to staff because I mean what I'm thinking is that it's this is the impossible task. You know, you're trying to find which of your organizations, which are all doing amazing work, are already being heavily funded by other organizations that we can say, okay, um, let's focus our dollars here because the thing is that we want to fund all of you, absolutely all of you. If 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 I had huge pockets, I would give. $100,000 each <laughs> of the organization so that we could just, you know, give. But the reality of the matter is that we have to make some really strategic decisions with regards to how we're going to invest these dollars. Um, being that we have the impossible question, Brad, do you feel that if we were to put a minimum cap on the grant and, um, and that if we were to do an evaluation, because the other concern that I have is, I don't want to go ahead and say, let's only fund no more than 30, 40, 50% of a program's budget, because if the program's budget is solely devoted, none of it going to admin and going directly to clientele services, you're not cutting administrative services. You're cutting people that are going to receive the source. And that's one of my biggest concerns here. Because when you start talking about a cap in funding, you're talking, depending on the organization that you're working with, you may be talking about people not receiving the funds directly rather than having bodies to go ahead and perform the duties. Um, but do you feel that with the scoring sheet that we just adopted, mm -hmm. that you have enough information as to if we say, you know, a minimum of, like, and I'm just throwing this number out, a minimum of a $10,000 grant, um, and that that we say that yes that we you know that and the the whole core funding proven programs uh, that kind of takes out the new grants but that we we give you a, a, a framework of how much would that be sufficient for that process to be then self done with the scoring criteria And that includes you guys setting your initial priorities. Well, it would it would include us telling you how much the minimum grant we would give. Right. It would include us maybe coming back next time with a little bit more information with regards to what is emergency aid versus preventative and counseling. Maybe dividing those two major categories, mm -hmm. and then just leaving everything else as is. Mm -hmm. And um, depending on what the budget is for the organization, maybe us coming with a maximum cap number um, based on you know services directly going onto the constituent, um, because that 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 kind of shrinks a little bit what you can do with the dollars. Would that application then, if we just were to provide you those points, help you 
or help you know the, the the staff be able to make a better decision based on that scoring chart that we've already got in place. That, that would definitely be a start, yes. Do we have to be out of here by 5 o'clock? Absolutely. Yep. Okay, we're going to need to wrap up. It sounds like we, um, we've got some things that we want to know from staff. We now have approved a, a process, mm -hmm. and so that process can be forwarded by city staff, city manager and staff to the council for the council approval, which is critical. We think they'll approve it. Moving ahead on these priorities is good. Um, we need to know, perhaps wrap up by any questions, any other data we want to bring forward or questions that we have for staff, and then decide whether we want to wait all the way until the 10th of February or meet sooner based on the calendar. Um, I, would, I would request, if possible, that staff would divide for us those two major categories within um, emergency aid and preventative aid and counsel. And then the other thing that I would like to know is a division of the organizations that are providing money that pretty much seems to be a pass-through, that all the funding goes directly to the constituent um, in whatever shape or form it is and how much of that budget it is versus the organizations that are providing assisted services or, you know, some sort of program mm -hmm. and how much of the budget we are for them. So that way we could then come back and start making these determinations of how much a minimum grant would be and what how much of a now. percentage <laughs> is and <laughs> what we're doing changed. now. Okay. Any other requests for staff before we break? Well, I would, I would just ask how we just approved a, a schedule that we're not going to be able to meet the first date on um, well, I thought they could cram it a little bit is that Ten minutes. is that something that that's going to hinder you a lot madam chair if I may especially taking out that, that kind of extra section in there about the extra responses We've built in a little cushion into the whole schedule, so we understood kind of going into this calendar that at least for this initial one, things might get squished a little bit, if you will. But yeah, we it, it would definitely work. So you think if we um, realistically, if this group waits until February the 10th to make a recommendation, it would take two more weeks minimum to get that recommendation to the council. So like the 25th of February, if we still have four Tuesday meetings by right. then, <laughs> might be March. Um, that if, if it was, if it was, if it was March before the council voted on it, can we still make this work? Mm -hmm. First, first week of March. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. With that, do you want to stick with our February 10 date or do you want to try and meet sooner? I, I would like to try to meet sooner. I, I'm seeing us already past, at the earliest, past what we've set for the uh, application workshop before we even get to the city council. So. Well, Brad's I, thinking we can squash it. But yeah, all right. What would you propose then for a next uh, an accelerated meeting schedule? Still a Monday from three to five? How does next Monday look for everybody? It's Martin Luther King Day. Oh. I'm not busy between three and five, but or staff. pardon me? Staff. Staff. We have no staff or... <laughs> um, Following Tuesday would be the Monday. I'm sorry. Twenty seventh. Would be the twenty seventh. How does that work? Uh, that will work for me. Twenty seventh. I can do the twenty seventh. 
do we need to go two hours or are we just going to I think if we can give ourselves two hours especially we're in a place where we have to go have to leave so we can't run over we can always get done early okay if that's can that okay the 27th three to five next meeting and the agenda will include only the social services funding priorities yes anything else that people would suggest and we've got a list out to staff on information if people would otherwise go home and look at the handouts from last meeting especially there were a lot there was a lot of work that staff did anticipating we would get to a point where we had these questions and then um, hopefully then with that two-week break we can get that information maybe by the end of this week and get it out to everybody so there's if possible plenty of time to look at it before the meeting that would really be great um, any other items to go to the order? The meeting is adjourned. Thank you all. We'll be back in two weeks. Four fifty-three. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Good work. Thanks, sir. Did you get my email?